Hello everyone and welcome back to the Beer Junkies. Today we are brewing a German Kolsch. The German Kolsch is one of my favorite styles. It is a very light, crisp, highly attenuated beer that is perfect to drink all year long. It has a soft graininess with a subtle sweetness and I, I just think it's a wonderful style of beer. Um, we are going to be walking you through our ingredients list. So we're gonna walk you through our grain bill, the water profile, the hops we use, and then the yeast strain that we use. Uh, we are also gonna walk you through our mashing profile, mash out, sparge, the boil, whirlpool, knockout. And then if you stay with us to the very end, we will walk you through our tasting session. So stick around and enjoy. So the Kolsch is a balanced beer and it is uh, a yellow in color. So our water profile for this one is 50 parts per million of calcium, 5 parts per million of sodium, 75 parts per million of sulfate, and 60 parts per million of chloride. And to do that, I'm adding my calcium chloride, gypsum, and epsom salt. I'll add that to the mash tun and the hot liquor tank to get that water profile where I want it. Um, right now I'm heating up and filling up the hot liquor tank. Once that is where I want, I'm going to push that into the mash tun to get that at the volume and temperature I want, and then we're going to mash it. But before that, I'm gonna show you the grain bill. All right, these are the malts that we're going to be using. You can see right here, we've got our rice hulls on top. We always add rice hulls just for extra stability. And then that grist right in here, nice and crushed, but not too fine. The uh, grains that we're using for the Kolsch, uh, since it is a light and crisp beer with a slight grainy sweetness, we're going to be using Pills, Munich, Vienna, and Kara Pills. The Pills is just our base where it adds that slight grainy sweetness. Um, the Munich will add a little bit of body to the beer, as well as a little bit of maltiness. The Vienna helps with the body as well, and also adds a little bit of fullness. And then the Kara Pills is, uh, helps with the head retention uh, without adding too much else to the beer. So we're gonna stick with those four malts for this, for this recipe. The mash tun is almost where I want it to be, so I'm about to be right back with the uh, dumping of the grains for mash in. This is our mashing setup for the German Kolsch. As always, we are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it through our wort pump, into the lower and up of the outer herms, and then recirculating through here, the very light mash. For the Kolsch, we are going to mash at 148, 149 degrees. We're gonna hold it there for 75 minutes. This will ensure that we get all of the fermentable sugars that we really want since the Kolsch is uh, dry and crisp. So we'll be back right around mash out. All right, we just got to mash out. So um, I've started breaking the temperature of the hot liquor tank. So this is going up about 176 degrees. And then the mash tun's already on its way up. It's gone from 148 and it's going up to about 166, 168 degrees. Once we get there, we're going to begin to sparge. For the German Kolsch, you don't want a ton of hop flavor, just a slight spiciness from a German noble hop. So we use our Saz hops, my fancy handwriting right there. And then we add just enough in as a, a bittering. And then we do add a little bit of flavor and aroma hops as well, but we use Saz exclusively for all three. Um, we're probably shooting for around 25 to 30 IBUs, depending on your starting gravity. Uh, nothing too crazy, just enough to make it dry and crisp with, again, that little noble hop flavor and aroma. All right, we just got to mash out, so now we are sparging. So we are pulling the wort from the bottom of the mash tun, pushing it into the boil kettle over there. At the same time, I'm pulling the sparge water from the hot liquor tank through our pump going up into the mash tun to rinse the rest of the residual sugars from those grains. After the sparge is done, we'll bring it to a boil. We'll boil it for 90 minutes and then we'll pull. All right, we are boiling, so we'll add our hops in at 60, 15, and 5 minutes. We just started the whirlpool, so we're pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle, pushing it through our pump into the tangential input. This will pull all the hops and proteins to the center so we don't transfer them over during knockout. We just started knockout, so we are pulling the wort from the bottom of the boil kettle through our pump, going over to our heat exchanger to rapidly cool it down from near boiling. You can see our oxygen stone injecting pure oxygen there. We're going through at 60, so it's a little bit low. We'll speed that up. Going through this hose down to the fermenter, 
where you can see it's bubbling away as we push out all that excess air as we fill that fermenterizer. This is the yeast that we use for our German Kolsch. We use the German Kolsch Ale Yeast from White Lab WLP029. It is a highly attenuating strain that promotes a clean, crisp, lager-like finish, and it ferments warm at about 66 to 67 degrees. Um, you don't have to use this one. You can use any other German Kolsch yeast, but this is the one that we use. We ferment the Kolsch at 67 degrees. We'll ferment it here until it is done. Right towards the end of fermentation, we'll raise it up to 72 degrees so we can do the diacetyl rest. Uh, once that is complete, we will cold crash it to 33 degrees, and then we will transfer it to the bright tank, carbonate it to 2.7 volumes, and then we will keg it. All right, so this is the beer that we made. It is crystal clear, gold. It has a white, foamy head for the smell. Uh, I get the grainy sweetness. I get a touch of the noble hop aroma with the, the slight spiciness. But that's definitely limited on this one. It's definitely, it's mostly that grainy sweetness. For the taste. It's dry and crisp, but has that nice grainy malty flavor. There's a balancing bitterness, but I don't get hardly any of the noble hop flavor or aroma. It's mostly dominated by the malt character. Yeah, but it is very crisp and very delicious. We're over the age of 21. We do not condone underage drinking. Please drink responsibly. Ah, cheers. If you would like more exclusive brewing content, make sure you click that subscribe button right below. And if you would like to see more recipes just like this one, feel free to visit our website, thebeerjunkies.com. We have a whole library full of beer recipes that you can browse through. Cheers.